with, and Miss Andrea is going to put up the um, the PowerPoint so that you can see it. It was there. Okay, requirement number one says describe how a properly working plumbing system protects you, your family, family's health and safety. So can, uh, I'm, I'm assuming everybody can see the uh, screen right now. So let's go over requirement number one and two. Okay, a proper plumbing system carries away feces and urine. So we, we pretty much know that's, we'll call it sewage from this point on, okay? Um, which might otherwise be a source of disease and would contain, uh, certainly be unpleasant if not removed. A proper system also prevents sewer gas from entering the home. So again, um, a proper plumbing system carries away this stuff and we'll get into where it goes and how it goes and what happens to it in a bit. So um, requirement number 1B, okay? So 1B, list five important local, well, hold on a second, hold on a second. Okay, let's talk about the working plumbing system, uh, how it protects your home. Okay, there's two systems in your home, obviously. We talked about the, the um, wastewater, okay? That's what's discharged after you use clean water, okay? Now, how does clean water get to your home? Obviously, it's processed, it's put through a system, and it arrives at your home through pipes, and, and it's all cleaned and chlorinated, however that may work, okay? And it comes into your home via meter. So as it comes into your home, it's pretty much sealed completely, okay? So water is processed at a processing plant, then it finishes, it's called finished water, goes through a system, comes to your home, and then it goes into your home. First thing it has to do is it has to cross a meter, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Once it crosses the meter, it goes to your home. It's still one line, and pretty much it's cold water. So that's your supply line, okay? So the supply line comes into your house, and at that point, when it gets to your house, at some point, it separates. Does anybody wanna guess how it, what it separates into? Hot water and cold water? There you go, very simple, very simple process. It splits into hot and cold water, okay? so. Most of the time it comes in the main line by your water heater, okay? So you have a water heater somewhere located in your house. It may be outside in a closet, it may be inside for some reason or another. But at that point, one portion of that line, and if you're looking at the picture, one portion of that line will distribute to the cold water system. This feeds all your cold water faucets that are in your house it even goes to the toilet, okay? Because you don't want hot water coming out of your toilet. All right, then a portion of it bypasses that and goes into the water heater where it's warmed up and then it's sent through a hot water line, okay? So again, it's a pretty darn simple system, all right? One form of water through a supply line comes into your house, it separates, one stays cold, one goes through a hot water process, and then it gets into the hot water line, where at some point, you either turn on a faucet and another faucet to get warm water, or just the hot water to get hot water. Again, really simple. Some showers have a one-handle uh, kind of mechanism that turns and gets the, uh, you have to kind of adjust it and play with it to get that warm water, but it works, okay? So sewage, all right? Once that clean water is used, it's turned into um, wastewater, 
okay? There's gray water, which is your sinks, your tub, uh, anything that uh, doesn't have what we talked about uh, earlier, the, the fecal matter or the urine. urine. Um, that goes in your toilet, okay? And that discharges through your toilet line. Those all, reverse process here, ends up in one system. Your wastewater, your gray water, tub, sinks, will feed down to your wastewater lines and out into a main line where it will connect with your sewer line and all that wastewater from your toilet will join that. And there's a process there because what happens is a lot of times you're flushing some heavier solids down the toilet or something like that. When these two connect, your wastewater from your showers, your washing machine, whatever, acts as a flushing agent to keep that stuff moving down and out and away from your home and into the sewer. So, all right, where's the next one? Ah. Okay, so let's talk about local re regulations. Potable water, clean water uh, for drinking, okay? Sealed sewer to keep smells and contaminants out of the structure. Backflow to stop uh, cross-contamination. Venting to allow air into piping so it will not create a vacuum. Water and drain pipes uh, sizing good flow uh, of water and sewage. Okay, so let's take the first one. Okay, clean water. We talked about that, basically where it comes from and how it gets there, okay? Sealed sewer systems, okay? Um, keeps the smells out. So how do you think, uh, does anybody wanna say, how does it keep the smell out of your house? Okay, so located under your sink, what's that? Just a trap. Trap, exactly. If you picture the trap, the trap like, uh, yes, the trap is kind of a U-shaped uh, uh, drain. And what happens is there's a little bit of water that stays in there. So as the water discharges out to the sewage line, that um, smell is kept from coming back in to the house or up the sink or up the drain or up the toilet because of that uh, pee trap under your sink. Now, the toilets are straight from the floor, straight discharge into the sewage line. But if you look at your toilet, I don't know if you ever stand there and just look at your toilet, <laughs> um, but you can see that kind of curvy uh, thing in the ceramic at the very bottom. That's technically the pee trap and the water stays in the bowl to keep that smell from coming back up. So here's an example right there. Okay. So again, that little elbow or U joint under your sink does a lot of work from keeping your house from stinking. Okay. Um, if you ever had a plumber come in or your parent take that off, uh, you immediately notice a smell, okay? And it's not a pleasant odor. So, uh, backflows. What are backflows? Okay, backflows stop, and this is for the, the um, fresh water system. What backflows do basically is it sends water one way, but it won't let it go back the other way. This is to avoid contamination. So let's say your water is moving in one direction, you turn on the faucet, it goes out. Well, as soon as you turn off that faucet, the backflow builds pressure, stopping any water from going backwards. Um, I know that uh, some cities require a black backflow device on your water hose uh, outside on your spigot. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but you put those on and then every time you turn it off, the water shoots out the sides and gets your pants all wet. That's a backflow device. That keeps any of the outside water from entering the fresh water system. So, all right, venting. Like anything, you need air to keep, keep it from a, a vacuum from happening. You want to allow 
air in there so that the flow keeps moving. If you look at the roof of your house, you'll see the vents. They go right up the roof. Normally, they're right by the bathroom or the kitchen where they're located. Some bathrooms, if you have two bathrooms, are located back to back and everything's in that middle wall. And again, you can refer to that diagram we were looking at earlier. It's in your book that shows all these different uh, uh, areas where it might be vented. So again, that just goes right up through the roof, okay? So um, water and drain pipe sizing, good flow of water and sewage, okay? So again, if you don't have the right size pipe, if your house isn't fitted with the right size pipe, then you may have um, a bad poor water flow. So let's take the fresh water intake, okay? As you have fresh water coming into your house, if you've ever had bad flow, it might be because you have old pipes. And what happens in those old pipes, like a one inch pipe, or I mean a half inch or a three quarter inch pipe, usually they're about three quarter, I think they're about half inch now, supply lines. But uh, those get corroded inside. So what happens, that slows down your flow. And those little chunks of rust, especially if it's galvanized or something like that, those flakes will get into your, um, your uh, nozzle on your sinks and they'll clog them up. So occasionally your parents or you will have to take them off, clean them out. So too, if you ever get bad flow, air flow in your sinks as you're turning it on, you think, what, what happened? You know, they used to come out fast. Take that little um, screen off, clean it out, and then put it back on and it might help with your water flow, okay? So pipe size is really important. Um, again, on your discharge, everything leaves your house usually is about a two inch, a half, well, let me take that back. About an inch and a half when it leaves your sink. When it gets into your wall, it e increases to two inch, okay? When it gets into the ground and gets to that discharge line, it goes into about a three to four inch pipe, okay? Really interesting thing about, let's talk about wastewater, the toilet, my favorite thing to talk about, is there's actually a function that goes on when you flush a toilet, okay? If you don't have the right size pipe, you're not gonna get the suction that will pull the discharge water out. So again, you got it's important that the right size pipe be on there. Now this is stuff you guys don't think about, but when you're flushing the toilet, not only is the water rushing in and causing a weight differential kind of thing to push it out, but then it gets into the line and there begins a suction that really pulls it even further out. And I know some of you may have those uh, hydro super toilets that, you know, you press them and it just shoves the water down there. But the same process is happening, okay? There's a suction that is created. If you had a pipe that was way too big, you wouldn't get that suction. So again, that's how the sewer works. All right, let's go on to the next one. And any times if you got a question, raise your hand, I'll be happy to answer something because this is like really, really cool stuff. Um, and you know, I was looking at the scout book. I don't know if you guys saw that, but you know, all the pictures of them real nice and neat, you know, and they're turning a bell or fixing something. It's not like that. Uh, if you ever saw your parent or a plumber doing it, it's a mess, okay? So they get really, really messy. And you know how much a plumber makes? They make about 80 to $90 an hour. So again, plumbers get good money for the mess that they're getting into. All right. So on page three of your book, what? Your workbook um, is a diagram. So what you need to do, look at, it says make a drawing, explain how a home hot and cold water supply system works. Okay. So we kind of talked about that. The first picture definitely describes that. Okay, you have um, your, uh, we're looking at hot and cold water, that's waste. And that's waste, okay. So hot and cold, again, we talked about it separating at some point, going through your walls. Sometimes it may come up from the ceiling down. Sometimes it'll come up from your slab or underneath the house up, 
Okay, now if you have a slab floor, in the old days they built the plumbing, or not the old days, but I don't know how they're doing it now, but they would do the plumbing under the house, put the slab on top, the pipes would come up, the, up through the ground and uh, into your house. Well, the problem with that is, is you know, if, if anything breaks or corrodes, um, you have to tear up the concrete and it's a big job and it's expensive. So we'll talk about preventative stuff later. But again, um, as it's delivered to your, your sink, you'll have a spigot comes out of the wall, you know, a hot and a cold. You'll have a valve, those hoses run up to your sink and you've got your hot and cold shower. Uh, again, that's in the wall usually. You can't see it other than the knobs, but the same process is there. You have what is, is called mixing, okay? And the water comes up hot and cold, goes to a point, and you manually mix it. Now some uh, facilities have mixers, which means they uh, provide a certain temperature of water. So this is automatically mixed and usually at the water heater and it's on top of the water heater and it's a round disc that has a pipe running to it. It's a round kind of a mechanism. And that does the mixing for you. So, okay, so let's go to waste. As you can see in the picture right here, um, what we were talking about, you have your toilet, you have your pee trap on your um, sink or your tub, which is below the tub area and that's usually um, on a house that doesn't have a concrete foundation that usually goes underneath the house and just hangs there. On a slab floor, it may be a little bit higher, but with any anything, it has to be lower than the water level that you are discharging. So in other words, your tub, drain, all, everything is below that because, does anybody know that, why that is? Want to take a shot at that? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Miss Andrea is over here giving me uh, her. Yeah, she she kind of set up the PowerPoint. She she wants to get all the information out there. But gravity, without gravity, you got nothing. Okay. So again, gravity and the discharge is really important. If it's flat that water goes nowhere, okay? It just kind of sits there. and That leaves room for bacteria or whatever to build up there. So again, that's, it's really important that when a house is designed that they have a line that is gravity feeding downhill or at a specific angle. So most of your houses have that. And then as you can see the discharge line, the water goes down or the wastewater goes down there's a vent that goes up to your roof that allows air to get in there so that you get a good flow. Have you ever noticed on your sink, your dishwashers may have a little cap that looks like a, a helmet, you know, of a, a Boba Fett helmet, okay? That's the air gap. So as your dishwasher is discharging through the line that feeds into the, usually it's into the garbage disposal side of the sink, that air gap is allowing air to go in there so it doesn't back up in your dish, your uh, dishwasher or come out your sink. So again, yeah, there it is. You can see that air gap up there. So uh, air is very important in the system as long as it's not entering your house. Okay, everything is built external or is designed so that you don't smell it. That keeps you safe, okay? Um, most of your discharge or your wastewater heads to the street into a sewer drain and then goes down to a processing plant where they actually process it to meet a drinking water standard. Now, would you drink it? I don't think I would, but again, it has to meet a drinking water standard before they send it back or send it into the, uh, the drainage system or the open system where the bacteria would kill anything else that, um, you know, if you're driving along a freeway, sometimes you see these, these streams going down to 605, that's from a wastewater plant. Not all of it, but most of it. 
um, especially down by the uh, 60 freeway. There's a wastewater. A lot of times you hear on the news, you know, when it rained a lot, all this raw sewage shot down into the beach area. And that's because there's so much water going in the waste area, the waste uh, plants that it overfilled into the wash and over to the, over to the ocean. So, all right, enough on that. So two, let's go to two. Safety, describe the safety, if I'm getting off track here and you guys are need, like I said, have some questions, feel free to stop me. Um, describe the safety precautions you must take when making home plumbing repairs, okay? So um, does anybody want to tell me a couple or share what they think might be some of the safety precautions that we could take? Okay, I'll take that as uh let's see. Think before you open the drain. That's really important, okay? So make sure that you're thinking before you open that drain. Think it through. Think it twice. Think it three times, okay? Sometimes even when I think it three times, working here at camp, it still didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So many pipes, especially when you're taking if you're in a, like this building, the admin building at Trask. Okay, this building's probably about 35 years old or more. Okay, so most of the pipe, drain pipe, is cast iron, which they don't use anymore, but they've since tapped into the cast iron and put galvanized. So the cast iron, what happens with cast iron, it gets rusty, it gets brittle. And if you're thinking you're, you're gonna just undo, a, let's say a two inch galvanized pipe, okay and you're got your pipe wrench and you're twisted it off well that gal that uh that cast iron will break because like a dutch oven it's it shatters okay like kind of like glass so again um kind of really think your project through or if you're going to make a repair uh it's really important even if your parents are doing it you know don't afraid, be afraid to say hey you know have you thought about this you know um has, is the water off uh um if the water's coming up from the ceiling, and let's say you take a valve off, there's pressure in the line. Even though you shut the water out, you're gonna get a, a, a face full of water coming at you. So again, have a bucket ready, have some towels ready, things like that. Okay, it says shut off the water, protect your eyes, protect your hands, protect your lungs, wear a mask, okay? Especially if you're dealing with sewer, sewage water, um, discharge because again that stuff really stinks it, it does it has a, just this odor to it it doesn't smell like what you think it would smell it's just like a conglomeration of everything in that pipe okay uh, practical safety tools all right what do you need to be safe we just kind of listed mo a lot of that stuff but practical safety tools are two you know gloves you know eye protection um, you know uh, what else? Clothes, proper clothing, okay? I'm gonna wear some long sleeve clothing because hey, if I don't want anything to get on my skin, you know? Um, have some towels. If you're shutting off the water, have a clean bucket of water that you can wash off real quick to get your hands clean if you got anything on it or wipe, wipe yourself off, okay? So that's, that's really important. Uh, just take care of yourself. Um, read labels on chemicals. So when it says relab read labels on chemicals, that usually means that you're trying to put something down the drain because the drain is slow, okay? And it's guaranteed to open that drain. Well, a lot of times you don't have much success with that and it just turns slime that's caught or plugging your drain, hair, whatever it may be, toothpaste, just uh, a montage of, of gray gook that gets in the pipe and it's not enough to be able to, to open that that draino okay that's chemical okay one if you're on a septic system you want to make sure that chemical is septic safe okay if you're on the city system a lot of times the stuff you get at home depot or places like that is really strong and will eat for a while but then it doesn't do the job, but it still leaches into the system. So 
again, we're putting chemicals into the, to the wastewater system. A lot of times, once you determine that, then you're gonna to wanna to determine your next step of removing the pee trap or calling a plumber, okay? They also make these little wheels, things that you can stick down there called snakes. Some are called different names, but they're, they're called snakes and whatever, and they're long. They even have this one for sinks that has all these little barbs on it. It's white, it's about yay long. Put that down there, stick it down, and when you pull it up, all you get is gicky hair stuff, okay? So again, um, watch yourself with it. Use gloves. Be careful. Okay. All right. Do not um, ignore code regu regulations. Do not ignore the smell of gas. Do not cut blindly. Do not misuse tools. Okay. And I'm sure you guys are all aware of that. Let's talk about real quick about regulation, code regulations. All right. Your houses and your city require that your house be built a certain way, okay? So, or to certain standards. If your plumbing may have a certain grade to it, uh, if you're gonna upgrade it or your parents are gonna put copper piping in, there might be codes that they have to follow in order to replace that copper piping with copper piping. And disposal, okay, if you're disposing, like I said, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, cast iron or something like that, then it's got to be disposed of properly. Okay. Um, one of the newer things, who said, uh, raise your hand if you ever heard that commercial about the smell good plumber who will come and unclog your drain for $90? Did you ever hear about that? You never heard that commercial? You guys never. Okay. Well, there's this commercial that states that the plumbing company, the Smell Good Plumber, will come out and unclog your drain for $90. If it's a mainline clog, they'll unplug it for $90. Well, when you get out, when he gets out there, your house, your, your home, in order to get that $90 rate, has to have what is called the mainline drain cleanout. And those are usually located in the yard. Now houses pre-70s probably doesn't have those. Okay, so they have to, you have to put one in. Now, if you don't have that, you don't get the $90 rate. So ask the plumber how much he'll, what it'll cost to put one in. He'll say he'll, he can do it for you in about, oh, four to six hours for about $2,500. So again, when you're building a house, you're, certain things have to be coded. Now you have to have that clean out and you wouldn't have that problem and you get the $90 great, okay? But if you have to install one in, you still have to go to the city and find out what their specific code is for that clean out. And that clean out is usually about a four inch line, okay? That goes into the ground and connects on a sweep in two directions to the main line so that when they feed a snake down there it can go either way to the street or to your home and clean out any clogs there so again code requires that you have one now and if you do you have to hire a plumber to come and do that but it's going to be pretty pricey but it, you can do it yourself just have your parents go to the city and pull a permit. All right, so permits are real important. Any changes you make to your plumbing system or do anything, check with your city codes. Very, very important. All right, next slide, because I can talk a lot. Um, tell how you'd make pipe, who can tell me how you'd make your pipe safe from freezing? That's an easy one, so I'm not even gonna answer that. Somebody answer it for me. Keep your house warm in general and have insulation maybe. Okay, good, good. So basically it's right there, keep it warm. Um, in the, the real cold country, what they did if they had a room that was our, you know, area of the house that was cold and wasn't being used, they would let the water drip. With water conservation, the way it is, especially in California, not a good idea. 
So again, the best way to do that is insulate your house, insulate the pipes wherever you can. And if you're living there, you shouldn't have a problem because you're using your water. If a line freezes, especially if it's copper, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be, it's gonna just bust like a slice where the ice will expand. And you may not notice it right away until that ice thaws the next day. And then you're gonna hear a rushing in the wall and you'll know. So here in Southern California, we don't have that problem. So, but if you know somebody has a cabin up in the mountains and they need to winterize it, that's what you do. Everything has to be covered. Even the smallest opening, when the wind blows through, will freeze that pipe. So, now you know. Okay, requirement 2A. No. Oh, you're steering me wrong here. Yeah, we already talked about this drain system. See the angle in the drain system, how it goes down and goes to the sewage system. Interesting thing here is you saw on the, on the picture that just went away. And we're trying to find it, but our grease traps. A lot of times your house will have a grease trap. And this is for what? Catching grease, right? So again, that grease has to go somewhere before it gets into your system. Some houses have it, others don't, um, but uh, a grease trap will ca catch that. In a septic tank system like we have here at Trask, where we don't have a, uh, a city sewer that we feed into, we have three tanks. As the water leaves or discharges the building, it goes to one tank. That first tank is for solids. Now, if it's at the kitchen, that first tank is for solid and grease because grease will rise up to the top, okay, and separate from the water. At the bottom of that septic tank, the water comes around and up, and then more settling happens there. Then there's another discharge in the third chamber, and this picture doesn't really show it, but in the third chamber, that's for the leftover water the wastewater, which will go into our leaching field. Um, and that's a whole nother story. Okay, so, where are we at now? Okay, requirement two, all plumbing fixtures use traps. We've talked about that. Keep the gases from coming back in and choking you while you sleep, okay? So we're good on that. All right. So show the tools. We'll show you tools when you get there on, um, on Saturday. Some of the plumbing tools, you actually be working with some of them. One of the most important common things you have around your house is the toilet plunger. And that's for unplugging toilets. It's an unpleasant job. If you've ever tried it, hopefully you haven't. But make sure you're wearing pants and, uh, you know, gloves. And because when you're working with a plug toilet, what the, the, the plunger concept is to shove air as quickly as you can and push it out. Well, if it's really stuck, let's say somebody stuck a tennis ball down your toilet or something, it's really stuck or it's just clogged up. When you push down too hard, that air goes somewhere and usually back up the tank bowl and out and splatters all over you. I could tell you stories about that. So again, never touch the black end or the, the foul end of the plunger, okay? Always assume that it has been, uh, you know, in a toilet and contains bacteria, okay? Oh, we're on requirement. Okay, requirement four, identify and describe the use of each of the following, following. Okay, we're going to talk about that. I think it's in your book. Um, I'll go over briefly. Washer, retainer nuts, that's just to hold um, like some of your, your what, um, spigots. They use pressure to hold them. So you put this little pipe slips in there and as you tighten it, it compresses, okay? And that holds it in. Others will use a lot of them now use just a, a screw on type. It's one hose connection, has a, a three eighths or seven eighths and a half inch fitting on it and it's done, okay? Um, so uh, 
Uh, plunger, we talked about that. R rubber force cup, that's what I was talking about. Solder and flux. Now you use solder and flux on copper pipe, okay? Solder is what see makes the seal. It's kind of that silvery stuff, and we'll be doing that when I see you on Saturday. Flux is kind of the uh, paste that you put on it. What happens is as you insert a fitting onto your copper, it draw, it heats up, but it causes a draw to draw that flux through between the uh, layers of the two pipes so that when it cools down, it, um, it, it's a solid fit, okay? Can be very hard to do, especially if you're working from a, under a sink and you're trying to make a repair because if there's water in the line, you have to heat the line and the line stays cold, one, because there's still water in it. Okay, and I'll talk about tricks that uh, you can do when you start doing that stuff. Um, okay, elbows, tees, all these are connections, couplings, plug, and we'll have all that stuff. Uh, unions, traps, drain pipes, uh, water meter. Okay, all your houses have a water meter. I don't know if they're on a computer now, but some don't. They're just a meter that regulates. They will. They will measure your house in units of gallons or maybe uh, metrics, I'm not sure, but it can go from one gallon a minute to uh, 10 gallons a minute to 100 gallons or 10 gallons an hour to 100 gallons uh, every, you know, 12 hours. So measures like that. It's usually located right on your grass or on the other side of the sidewalk near the curb because it belongs to the city. So if you go see that it's on the city side and i think the city owns you know the first four feet of your of, of the walkway of your house or something like that from the curb so again usually the cities are responsible for uh, seeing the oversight of uh, taking those for the water bill and installing those if necessary okay next requirement five Name the kinds of pipes that are used most uh, most often in plumbing, okay? So I mentioned one. Does anybody want to mention, tell me what they think? Name a couple off the top of your head. Don't say wood, okay? Wood, they don't, they don't use that anymore. Go ahead. Copper. Copper, yes, I mentioned that one. Okay, what about what another one? PVC. PVC, real good. Anybody else? Okay, we mentioned uh, cast iron, which is phasing out. Um, there's still galvanized steel is phasing out too because it has a short, a short lifespan. When I say a short lifespan, about 40, 50 years, uh, it, it'll rust and it'll give out. So and little pinholes develop in that. So again, um, you know, the thing they're using now is uh, the PVC. Well, no, I take that back. PVC is not used for in-home use. You see that in garden, okay? In the garden areas where they put a sprinkler system in, uh, but it's not used in your house. They tried that for a while. PVC actually comes in different schedules. This, most pipes do. There's like a schedule 40 and a schedule 80. Schedule 40 is, is thinner, schedule 80 is thicker, okay? So again, uh, if they're like a water system, you know, that has a lot of pressure, needs a, you know, a PSI. To, everybody knows what PSI is, right? Pounds per square inch. That pressure builds up. 40, schedule 40 will blow, okay? So again, they'll need a, a thicker plastic pipe. So the most common right now is copper. And then uh, interesting thing about PEX, which is that flexible, I have a piece of PEX right here. Okay, even though it's not flexible, but they were using this for a while. And you know, it's supposed to be super duper uh, quick, then you buy fittings, the pipe is cheap. Okay, but the fittings are expensive, of course right and then you just like funk and you're done all right they call them shark bites they call them other things like that but 
state of California has deregulated these and uh, outlawed these, the, the packs. Even though it's simple, plumbers are loving this, and you still see it at Home Depot, and I gotta find out what's going on with that, if they're using it for different applications. But from what I've read is that the uh, state of California has outlawed this for now, or regulated it. And the reason being, like any polyurethane or polyfiber, is as water passes through it, they say that it picks up, you know, or could pick up contaminants from whatever the, the, uh, the pipe is made out of, okay? So it's kind of interesting. And state of California has some of the strict, strictest uh, water regulations in the whole United States. I'd say the whole world. I'd say they're really a pain. But uh, again, uh, it's real strict. They're constantly coming up with new regulations. And so either that or somebody in the government owns a copper pipe company and they outlaw it. So we won't go there. So, all right, what's next? Okay, so we talked about uh, the pipes, plastic, uh, galvanized steel, PVC, like I said, that's for outside. And what we're gonna do some of that. Ever, ever saw PVC being put together? You put the glue, slide it in there, and it holds. We'll do some of that on Saturday. So six, um, we're gonna cut and thread a pipe. We'll cut it, we'll, we'll thread it, show you how it's done. And most, you know, companies uh, are out of state or they're manufactured in, in Mexico or, or um, Arizona. And when you thread, everybody knows what threading is, right? The pipe thread, usually how it happens on galvanized, okay? I don't have one here. But that's where you just kind of screw it on and uh, you have to seal it. Anyway, we're going to, uh, to thread it ourselves. Uh, plumbers have to do that a lot because a lot of times they'll get to a home that has a, they cut out a section and they have to custom make a section so they have to thread it their, their selves and to put it together. So, okay. Um, what else? Under... Oh yeah, we're gonna solder, which I talked about. Tube cutting, we're gonna cut tube, we're gonna do all that stuff. So anyway, it's gonna be a, a quick uh, two hour, two and a half hours, just to get you out there. And please bring your packet with as much information that we talked about. I know it's a lot to, to uh, go over. If you don't get it, you know, I'm not gonna like, we can fill it out there too, okay? We'll give you the information we can. So this is being recorded, but if you miss something and you know I talk too much, then we'll fill it out on Saturday when, when, when we see you. The idea is just to get you out there, get you, give you the, uh, the on-hands portion of how it really works, you know. And maybe some of you have already done that before, but again, you can help with the other scouts uh, in showing them how it's done. So we're gonna do uh, probably about four things. We're gonna go over tools, we're gonna go over fittings, we're gonna cut a pipe or thread a pipe, and then we are going to solder a, a copper line, and we're also going, that's five, well, then we're gonna connect PVC together. And I might, if I have some shark bites, I'll bring those and we'll, I'll show you how this works too. And I'll bring a washer. And uh, we can, uh, I'll show you how a faucet works and all the different parts of it, you know, because basically nothing le leaks because they have washers. Your shower doesn't leak because it has a washer in it. Your sink um, doesn't leak because it has a washer in it, okay? Um, when you open up a spigot, there's usually a little rubber um, thing that comes down and closes it as you're closing because that pressure keeps the water out. If you have a shower with a tub where you pull the stopper up in order for it to come out the shower, same principle. That, that blocks the discharge and forces the water in a different direction. So if something's leaking in your house, probably the washer or it's corroded. So again, um, so we'll go over all that. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, you guys are awesome. And uh, I know it's late, 
but appreciate you for, you know, for taking the course. I will see you on Saturday. If you don't know where we're going to be, we're going to be at uh, Firestone. Miss Andrea will have sent you out all the information. And, uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, wear like, you know, a field shirt. Uh, don't wear your uniform activity shirt. And really, wear something that you want to get dirty. Jeans, you know, so, so be comfortable because we are going to be using uh, uh, some paste and different things like that. And uh, we don't want it, it's hard to get off once you get it on your clothes, so. Um, but we're gonna have fun. So Miss Andrea, we'll make sure that you get all the information. And uh, so we'll see you on Saturday at what time? 12. At 12 o'clock, so. Um, we'll have a little snack there, a peanut butter sandwich. Uh, if you're allergic for, with, to peanut butter, let Miss Andrea know. Everything is sealed. So, oh, um, uh, COVID protocols, we will be taking your, I think she sent that out too. We'll be taking your temperatures, checking you in, stuff like that. Make sure you bring a mask, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll have a good time. So, all right. So, thank you very much. Good night. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.